Hello, and welcome to the SciShow Talk Show, the day on SciShow where we talk about stuff with the cool people. Today we're going to be talking to Nick Jenkins. Nick is the technical director for our office. He does Crash Course. He does, uh, and he also fathers uh, this little thing. My buddy. Who's Abby. Abby is a corgi. What kind of corgi is Abby? Uh, Abby is a Pembroke Welsh corgi. Okay. So there are two kinds of corgi. There's yep. cardigan and the Pembroke. Um, not the same breed. They're, they're complete, two completely separate breeds. They're similarly cute. Similarly cute, yes. And the word corgi actually means uh, dwarf dog. Oh. Cor means dwarf or midget in Welsh and gi means dog. And so they're both dwarf dogs. Um, but one is from Pembrokeshire and the other one's from Cardigan. And is the difference the tail? Uh, the tail is one of the differences. Also, the, the size. Uh, cardigans are bigger okay. than, uh, than Pems. And uh, also, uh, cardigans have bigger ears. Okay. Um, they're sort of floppy. And their personalities are very different. So, like, the personality of a cardigan is usually a lot more slap-happy and mm -hmm. um, clownish, whereas Pembrokes are much more serious. <laughs> <laughs> about their about their work. Um, <laughs> they do have work. They were bred as work dogs. They were. Not just to be cute. No, and that was what I wanted to talk about today, actually, was whenever Abby uh, shows up on Crash Course or on Sexplanations, mm -hmm. um, there are, or on like Michael Aranda's channel, wherever she shows up, there are always people in the comments that talk about how they were bred to be cute, and they weren't. Mm -hmm. They were actually bred to be working dogs. Um, they were actually the first herding dog. They're the oldest herding dog. And the reason that they're bred this way the reason they have the short legs, uh -huh. the reason they have no tail, um, the reason they have big ears is all based on that. Um, so they have the short legs so they can get out of the way of kicking cows and kicking right. sheep and stuff like that. And yeah. they can just sort of roll with it. Uh, the big yeah, ears are to keep them alert. Cow, yeah, sheep and cows are designed to kick uh, <laughs> yes. when they are threatened. Yeah. Uh, but they are generally designed to kick things that are taller than that. Yes, absolutely. So they just right over the head. Yep. So kind of the opposite of greyhounds who are, they are bred for hard work greyhounds. I have a greyhound. Yeah. Uh, but not sturdy dogs. No, no. They're, they're, op they're designed to operate for like two years max. Right. And then, and they're very like paper thin skin. <laughs> we live in Montana and she can't go on a hike. Like we go on a hike and she comes back bleeding from six different holes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also completely differently shaped. Yes. Um, opposite and, shape. And this brings up something that I wanted to talk about, which was selective breeding. And if yeah. you look at where dogs are from and what jobs uh, they did with people, you start to see that, you know, it. all of these different dogs had purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and this particular dog, its purpose was to work all day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would, it, the, she could put in an eight hour day better than I could. Um, she just has nonstop energy. Instead of it uh, happening, <laughs> happening naturally, yeah. um, you have a breeder, somebody like you or me, who would just basically say, I like this trait in this dog, so I'm going to find two dogs that have that trait, and then I'm going to breed them. Um, and so you try to maximize that that particular trait. I mean, it sounds simple, but it's... Yeah, and I mean, you're all, all also, I think, generally selecting for more than one trait at a time. You're, right. You're looking at, you know, how, like, you know, the size, the the ability, and maybe you're not saying like this dog, I, I want a short dog, uh, let's go for that one, but mm -hmm. you're saying I want a dog that works hard and I want a dog that operates well and one that, you know, uh, has done good for me for these last 10 years. And right. so you take that dog and you try and, you know, get its genes in as many babies as possible. Exactly. It, that is exactly so correct. So it's not like we start out saying, we want to create a corgi. How are we going to do that? No. Though we could do that. <laughs> yes, we could. But that's not how it happened. No. You start just sort of looking at it and saying, okay, well, I live in the desert. I need a dog that mm -hmm. is, you know, going to be good at, you know, cooling itself or whatever. You can start that way. Or you can just say, this dog in particular was really good. So I want to try to breed this dog to get mm -hmm. more of this dog. Right. So it's really, really... Um, and yeah, with them, it's, I want a dog that hears well. I want a dog that is rough and tumble. I want a dog that has a great personality or a personality that is work centered. Mm -hmm. That um, So there's a lot of things we're breeding for. But the problem is that when you do selective breeding, you also sort of encourage disease. Yeah, you can. Um, well, yeah, you can yeah. encourage disease. Selective breeding has given us great dogs and a great number of dogs, but it can also, it starts to become more, a little bit more like inbreeding. So those yeah. recessive genes start to get more and more into the mix. Mm -hmm. So uh, The crazy thing to me with selective breeding is how fast we can do it. It's not really been that long that we've been doing it, and we have so many breeds, and they're so different. So different. It sort of is a weird thing when you link it to um, 
a lot of what Darwin talks about mm -hmm. because it's like theoretically it shouldn't be possible to produce this much variation in that short of a time right but obviously we can yeah it, it turns out that <laughs> genetics is much more complicated than we yes. thought it was going to be which is really cool and it means that we have a lot more to study and a lot more to learn I'm, I'm also really fascinated by and I don't think that this is known uh, how we breed instincts into a dog behaviors mm -hmm. uh, you know obviously a greyhound uh, behaves very differently from a corgi like just the fact that you know like herding dogs versus hunting dogs, all of these, like what you would think of as trained behaviors aren't in fact trained. Mm. They are just instinctual. Absolutely. And how the heck did we implant, how do we like, how did we not just selectively breed the body, but also the mind? Exactly. Fascinating. Because yeah, if you took a corgi out to a cattle ranch, yeah, you worked with somebody who knew what they were doing, that corgi would be herding in probably about 20 minutes. Yeah. Not so much with a greyhound. No, no, A lot no, of other dogs no. would get out there and just be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it would be... Chilling. But everybody's yelling might, at me. Might run away from... Yeah. Or toward... I Probably just lay down. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that that is another thing. It's like you're not just breeding for body. You're breeding for having the best dog to do a particular job yeah. you know and in her case that job is herding and guarding ranches mm -hmm. very alert mm -hmm. like there are times we'll all be sitting around playing games and nobody will hear anything and she will go nuts because she heard something mm -hmm. so she knows, she knows what's going on these big radar dish ears yeah. you know are really good oh my for god that. she is so happy she's so happy right now and that could have sex with a wolf and make a baby yep that is fertile <laughs> That is crazy. What would you call that? You wanted to get you a wolf boyfriend? No, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. You get a bunch of, a herd of war geese. War geese, send out your war geese riders. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> terrifying. <laughs> um, I'm sure it would be adorable. But yeah, I mean, the thing for me is there are all sorts of breeds of dogs. It's many, many breeds of dogs. Yeah, dogs are the most varied I believe animal, certainly mammal. Oh yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if you're just talking about body shapes, yeah. there's, I can't imagine going from Chihuahua to Great Dane. Like, how could you get more? How is that the same animal? Yeah. Yeah. And yet? Because if you look, you know, in the jungle, you're probably not going to see that amount of variety. No, no, that never two, happens. You know. That, no, it's, right. it's, Im it's impossible for that to happen without um, sentient influence. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, I think we've done a great thing in the creation of dog breeds, though I am occasionally confused and perplexed by uh, why we create certain breeds of dogs. Uh, but well, there are many dogs like uh, the bulldog that, that in creating them, we've also created a problem. Like many bulldogs can't give natural birth to their puppies; uh, they have to have cesarean wow. um, because the dogs' heads are so big. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So there, you know, there are things like that. So if the dog runs away and gets pregnant, it could, it could die. Right. You know. Um, yes. It. Uh, I've actually uh, heard that if you let dogs just sort of interbreed for a few generations, they end up all looking the same. It's a dog that has basically you breed the breed out of it and it right. immediately becomes just what just a, a wild looking dog like the, you know a small brown um lab mixy looking thing yep which we have lots of we do especially here and they're yeah. often very good dogs yeah they are <laughs> um so just to wrap up here i mean what i want to say is you know corgis are really popular yeah. they're really energetic they're very alert they need a lot of exercise long walks um they are adorable mm -hmm. but you know definitely know what you're getting yourself into they're yeah. they're a big dog in a small body yes actually they're a big dog with small legs really so. <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit hi 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 <laughs> did you want you wanted me to pet you on the head okay thank you is Abby. that what you wanted thanks for being a special guest uh jesse from animal wonders is going to come and talk about her own selective breeding program that she's got going on in Animal Wonders, which I think will include some adorableness. Abby, you have to behave yourself because this will be your natural prey. I think we're going to put you away. Okay, let's that's, do that. That's, that's probably a better do. idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sweet Pea, who's the cutest rat I've ever seen. And this is Ebenezer. And they are rats. Um, I've never, like, I like rats. I know that not everybody does, so I apologize to those people, but I love rats, um, and I have had several friends who have really, have had really wonderful relationships with their rat pets. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, but I don't think I've ever seen anything as cute as this <laughs> in, in the rat family. Just the fur is like such a cool color and the eyes are so big and the nose is so cute and the big ears. She does have big ears, doesn't she? Hi, are we friends? Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Aww. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Yeah, I like you too. Don't bite me. So you guys were talking about selective breeding and um, rats are selectively bred from, course, you know, yeah. they originate from the, the black rat, which came into the Norway rat and we've gotten lab rats from them, but we've also gotten the fancy rat. The fancy rat is our pet rats that we have today. And there's, um, there's several different breeds of these guys. There's the um, just the regular, then there's a satin, then there's a velvet, different, those mm -hmm. are different coats, and then there's Rex. Um, but then there's also different patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the albino, and then there's hooded, and there's speckled, mm -hmm. and really? then... <laughs> Come here. I'm going to this dark hole. Oh, you're fast, huh? There you go. It's fine. There you go. But what, what the, we have two traits that, that we're looking to selectively breed at animal winners, which, which I have fun with, is um, her ears mm. are going to be a little different than a regular rat's ears. These guys are what we call Dumbos, and their ears have switched from being on top of their head to on the sides oh, of their okay. head, and they look extremely large. So Ebenezer uh, has curly coat. Yeah, and this is called a Rex coat or curly, and they're going to have wavy fur, and then their whiskers are going to be a little yeah, bit curled. That's so cute. Yeah. Now, he's not an albino, and can you tell why? Uh, because his eyes are black. Yeah, so he does have pigment and he also has one black spot on top of his head. <laughs> so he is not an albino. Now we uh, bred him. Here you go, Nick. Oh, thank you. I get my own rat. <laughs> <laughs> to a regular, just, just she was a tan hooded rat and she created sweet pea. They created sweet pea and Scrooge. Oh, okay. You got now, the... the the curly whiskers. Curly whiskers and that wavy fur. Uh -huh. Now they both have Dumbo ears, they have Dumbo ears. So you can see that Scrooge got a lot of the traits from his dad mm -hmm. and not so much from his mom. Mm -hmm. And Sweet Pea got a right. lot from her mom, mm -hmm. but not much from her dad. So it's just interesting, you know, they can be in the same litter, and these guys were actually in different litters, um, but the same genes from right. mom and dad were coming. Mm -hmm. so, so now his eyes are Pinker. Yeah, so he is an albino. He's actually an albino. He is an okay. albino. And it's kind of dark. I mean, you can't see it very well, but yeah, he does really have... really subtle. He mm -hmm. does have pink eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to bring out... I brought some other little babies, so you, just so you can see the ear shape. So what do we have here? I wanted to show you a normal eared rat right next to okay, Scrooge. Yeah. Uh -huh. And oh, you can yeah. see how those ears are perky <laughs> mm -hmm. on top of her head there. And then Scrooge's have come down onto the sides. And so that's a, a Dumbo rat and then a regular rat. Okay, that's crazy. Were, were any of these from the same litter? This one came from a completely different. Oh, okay. okay. Completely different. Um, I have a little Ooh. handful that of my newest litter here. Tiny baby, tiny oh. rats. Itty bitty baby <sighs> Cuteness rats. overload. These are all the same pups from the same they litter. They look like little furred pigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And they're all Ebenezer's babies. Look at your kids. <laughs> so... Why do you uh, why do you breed for these traits? Just why for do we cuteness? Breed them? Yeah, just for cuteness. Yeah. There's no real reason to do it. It's not going to help them survive. It doesn't make them, you know, tastier. <laughs> it doesn't make them, <laughs> oh, you... you know, more friendly. It just uh, yeah. It's just for cuteness factor. And um, well, you did get that. You've got yeah. the cuteness factor. Super cute. We've got cute going on. Cute, <laughs> cute has been achieved. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could have you in my house, but my cat would eat you mm -hmm. immediately. We had a cat and a rat that were really good friends. <gasps> yeah, it was Daisy. Her name was... <laughs> <laughs> rat was Daisy. You want me to take it back? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hang it. You want baby? Sure. Oh, gosh. You <laughs> can't even feel it. It's so adorable. Hi. So the rat and the cat were actually really good friends, and they would take turns chasing each other in play. And so the cat would... <laughs> run after the rat, the rat would run, and then it would stop, and the cat would stop and go... Tap. <laughs> <laughs> You're it. And then, and then the rat would turn around and chase the cat into the other room. They that were really was, playing tag. They were really having that fun. That is not it the experience really I have had with my, with my cat. <laughs> they grew she, up together. She though. plays uh, not nice games <laughs> with the, all of the rodents she has fun found thus far. More instinctual <laughs> games. Yeah. 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 She uh, she actually 
I don't. I don't think has ever killed one. But she does. It's not. It's not. Ple- it's not nice play. Hmm. She, Played with her food. Yeah, and she bites them and then lays down on them. <laughs> it's like <laughs> feels them wiggling underneath her belly. I don't know what this behavior is, but it's very strange. <laughs> so thank you to Ebenezer and Scrooge, father and son here. <laughs> Um, and thank you to you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. Uh, Jesse from Animal Wonders, as always, you're amazing. I can't believe you have so many cool things to share with us. If you want to check out her YouTube channel, it is linked in the description below. Nick, thank you for sharing your insights and your corgi with us. Uh, if you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. This thing is so cute.